Okay, in Carlo Collati's story of Pinocchio, Pinocchio doesn't get stuck in the belly of a whale, he gets stuck in the belly of a shark. So we made a big shark puppet, and I wanted to walk you through how we made it. Here's a look at what the shark looks like. This is made out of PVC that I had to basically learn how to bend, and, uh, and scrim. Now, for those of you who don't know what scrim material is, scrim material, uh, and interestingly enough, this is called shark tooth scrim. That's just what it's called if you buy it. It's called shark tooth scrim. It's a cotton material. It's basically a, a theatrical gauze that allows you to basically see through it. It's, it's opaque, essentially, if you light it from the front, but if you light it from the back, suddenly you can see right through it. That's going to be important for our production because we want Pinocchio to be sitting Essentially what we made is a big tent uh, and we want Pinocchio to be sitting on the inside of the tent and so is Geppetto and then we can light them separately so that you see them individually in the belly of the shark. And so Pinocchio gets to talk first and Pinocchio then is seen right here through the wall basically of the shark, uh, the front of the shark. And then in the back, we see Geppetto, and then there's this touching moment when they both realize they're in the belly of the shark. This shark does sort of double duty when he uh, is also then used as a puppet to chase Pinocchio and, and Geppetto as they're swimming away from the shark. And then we play a little bit with the size of the actors and with the puppets and stuff, and the audience forgives it. It's a convention that they like. Uh, but... I'll, I just sort of want to walk you through all the different components of this thing. I took inspiration of a, from a picture of, I think it was a ballet of Pinocchio. I wish I could credit who it was, but I don't know the production, uh, but I liked this picture. And I like this picture too. This picture maybe showed a little bit more uh, the ribs of the, uh, of the whole thing, but I really had no idea how that thing was constructed. And uh, I, although I really loved their fish, I wanted ours to look just a little bit more sharky. So of course, the first thing I do when I don't know what I'm doing is instead of making something big, I try making it small. So I made a tiny little model uh, out of Aluminum armature wire and a little bit of copper wire here, too and uh, And some hot glue and this is in half inch scale So this gave me roughly the idea of, of how I was going to make the shark And so what I had to do is I had to figure out what material I was going to use it I'm used to working in steel a lot for this kind of stuff, uh, but that seemed like it was going to be too heavy so I had to figure out how to work with PVC. I've worked with PVC plastic quite a bit, but I've never bent it. I've never done a lot of uh, PVC bending. So one of the first things I had to do is learn how to bend PVC pipe, and uh, I was just using a one inch pipe, and I uh, bent it with a heat gun. Now, if you're going to use this technique, uh, let me please, disclaimer, you need to do this in a really, 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 really well vented area, uh, and, uh, and, but basically I just used a heat gun and just warmed up the plastic uh, until it was completely malleable. There are a lot of different ways to bend PVC. One of the best ways that I've seen is by using hot sand, uh, and you pour hot sand down the tube and then it becomes malleable. But there are a number of different ways. So, but I, I was able to bend the different shapes uh, that you see that then become the ribs, essentially, of this big giant fish. So once I had the skeleton, essentially the ribs, then I had to create some things that sort of separated them, that made them collapse. So I made basically these, these uh, collapsible uh, trusses, I guess you'd say. Uh, they're joints and these things move. Uh, and they will uh, they will allow this thing to stay open. I have them over here too. You see that uh, they are they are movable, and uh, and you can sort of stretch them out like this. Okay, but so I made these out of wood. What ended up, and I, I had some wooden ones here too. This is different. What I did here is my customer happened to have a uh, drying rack that was broken. And so these are made out of uh, just, I think, die cast metal. Uh, and 
probably really, really like gauge steel. And I was able to just use these, man, I wish I knew what these were called. Uh, you know, extendo arms or extendo, I call them, I don't know what to call them, but you've seen uh, these things on like d clothes drying racks. Uh, well, anyways, that thing was garbage, so I was able to use this here. This has ended up being way better, and if I would have had another one of these and the money, I would have put one here too, because this just works out slick. Uh, this keeps it uh, the shark open when it needs to be open, and I'll show you how this whole shark looks when it's collapsible too, because I did make it collapsible because we have very little wing space in our theater, and I we need to be able to hide this in, in the wings, and so the whole shark has to be able to compress. But you can see over here, I've got the other side of that uh, clothes drying rack too. So that worked out, uh, that was kind of just a, an experiment and sort of a happy accident. But these work too when they're working with this, but uh, just using these uh, wood flexors all by themselves wasn't uh, doing a great thing. That's what I had up here though. Uh, I had to make these uh, flexors up here. Uh, and and back here too but again too I'm just I was I've never done this before and so I was making it up uh, and if you borrow from this idea feel free uh, to please in, in the comments tell me how you can improve this uh, but this ended up working uh, enough for us one of the things that we use then is I, I carved out of some EVA foam these uh, fins I decided kind of fun if this shark had two dorsal fins instead of one because it's a story and this is sort of a monster fish uh, and so this is how I ended up uh, doing this what this ends up being is it's sort of a spacer uh, I needed sort of a rigid material and EVA foam I use the high density stuff it's bendable but it is pretty rigid stuff too and so I was able to uh, kind of double it up make a base for it uh, and then clip it, you see that I used uh, these little uh, parachute clips here to just sort of clip the whole thing on. And uh, on the back side, I've got that too. But what that does is it creates a spacer so these, uh, these ribs don't compress when we're actually doing the chase scene with the puppet and stuff. So here, I'm just gonna undo this so you can sort of see what we're dealing with here. So this whole thing then, can come up. It's zip tied in the front and by the way, uh, the way I got the fabric onto the um, uh, onto the fish was largely zip ties. So uh, I used light colored scrim, just something that these used to be Scrooge's curtains for when we did a Christmas Carol. Uh, so I had that that kind of tan colored scrim and I sort of glued that in place with hot glue and uh, and then when I had, I wanted the whole fish to be uh, dark, and plus I had a lot of, of black scrim. And then I zip tied that on. Man, have I become a big fan of zip ties. So zip tying uh, the, uh, the, the scrim fabric to the, the fish frame was the way to go for me. When we first kind of beta tested this on stage, it wasn't showing up. So then what we ended up doing was we used luminescent paint. Uh, I just bought some luminescent paint from my hobby store. Hobby Lobby is what's here in Mankato. Uh, and this has been great. Uh, this, this luminescent paint, we have black lights up top here. Uh, and when those shine down on this, even under blue light, it just pops out. It's just, um, through the through the uh, water effect that we have, which is a whole nother scrim, uh, this thing just glows, and so it's become really controllable. And then I was able to make uh, some Angry Bird eyes here, uh, and this is a piece of EVA foam. This is a PV piece of EVA foam, and then the whites of the eyes are just more white scrim that I had. The teeth, uh, we wanted them to sort of be cartoony and curvy, uh, so they are just EVA foam also. And, uh, and this is just a piece of pipe insulation. I don't want to squeeze it too much because I didn't prime it. Uh, so that paint has kind of come off a little bit. Uh, but our show is closing tonight, so it's lasting just fine. But uh, this is uh, really, this, this has made the whole, the whole fish just pop to life now that it's got that paint on there. We were able to paint the dorsal fins on there too. 
Okay, so the puppet does collapse down a little bit. Mostly this is because we have very little wing space in the sides of our theater. So um, I'm just gonna show you how it collapses down. It goes about half size, uh, but it does give us enough space to hide it in our very small wings. Here's how it looks. And then we can tip this up too buy us a little bit more space if we need to. So it kind of accordions, uh, it sort of uh, compresses just enough for us to be able to fit it backstage. So when you kind of look at it like that, it looks kind of dinky, it doesn't look very big, but on our stage, which is not a very big stage, this fish fully extended does look massive. And once we do the shark chase, uh, which we have like a water effect and we've got another scrim that we're using for water and we've got little uh, tiny swimming puppets that uh, look like Geppetto is clinging to Pinocchio while they're swimming. Uh, this thing really does look massive and it's pretty impressive to the audience. So uh, we are uh, uh, kind of making use of a lot of lights uh, with the luminescent paint, black light, uh, and then lots and lots of puppets in this production to create a very, very ominous and yet fun, very puppety, very storybooky shark chase that happens in Pinocchio. So anyway, uh, maybe you want to make a shark, maybe you want to make a big giant fish out of PVC and fabric. Uh, I used PVC and scrim material, that way we could see through it and we had a lot of cool interesting lighting effects where we could see Pinocchio and Geppetto on the inside of the shark. If you're interested in making something like this, I thought that I would share this with you uh, so that you have some ideas too. If you do end up using something like this, I would love to know about it, so leave me a message in the comments. Uh, and until next time, you're watching It's a Creative Life. My name is Pete, and I hope you guys have a great time. Until the next video, we'll talk to you later. Bye-bye.